drawing tips that have helped me become a way better artist. Tip number one, so always use a wide range of pencils. So that would be from 5H to 5B and all those middle tones in between. This will help you get the lightest lights and the darkest darks. Tip number two, whenever you are shading, always use blending pencils. This will help you get rid of all those streaks and make everything way smoother. Tip three, when you're working with highlights, definitely use a white gel pen. They get you way more detail. Tip four, when you are drawing hair, always use a dried out pen first and you can create streaks just like this. Then you take a pencil, you go over it, and you get more realistic looking hair. Like for a part two. Here are some tips for beginner artists. I know I'm not the best artist out there, but I'll give you some tips and tricks that I use. When coloring your drawing, I wouldn't use Crayola or Crazy Art because they don't blend as good as Prismacolor. I really highly recommend Prismacolor color pencils. When drawing fur on an animal, I would use an X-Acto knife or a sharp object. Obviously, I don't own an X-Acto knife, so I'm using a screwdriver. This helps you get really fine looking fur. When blending graphite, I'd use a brush instead of a blending stick because it makes your drawing less smudgy. Also, when coloring, make sure you move your pencil more in a circular motion. It helps you blend your drawing better than just moving your pencil up and down. And finally, I would recommend to buy a white gel pen. It helps you create more depth and highlights in your drawings. Thank you for watching. Here are some helpful tips on how to draw folds. Start off with finding a pinching point where all the fabric comes together. Arrows will help determine on where the lines go. As you draw your outline, there'll be more zigzags at the pinching point. Draw your folding lines following the arrows. The opposite side should look tight and relatively smooth. Draw minimal bumps and lines. In most cases, there are more than one pinching point on a figure. Points that are relatively close will share the same arrow or folding line. Using the same technique as before, draw your outline with zigzags near the pinching points and the fold lines following the arrows. These lines can also help establish where your shadows and lighting go. For tight clothes, use an overlapping pattern, remaining relatively close to the body. For loose or baggy clothing, use large folds, where it looks like the folds are eating your cloth. That's it. Hope this helps, and good luck! Drawing tips! Today's episode... Hands! Everyone's enemy! Now keep in mind, this is how I started. Okay, first, you draw three intersecting rings. If you've ever seen Quest for Camelot, do that. Okay, so, connect, connect, half. With that half, you go up as far as you think, go over, then connect this. Believe it or not, this is the palm and wrist. You measure out this way, and bring it down. Look at that, it's a thumb. Draw a box right above, line. Line. Middle finger, bring up a little higher. Pinky, make it lower. Once you got that concoction, tidy it up a bit. Pinky actually goes down a bit further like that. That's roughing it. That's what you might get after some practice. Do it this. I want to see how you do. See ya. Here's how you draw a side profile. Circle, darken the curve, make a slide for the nose, round it off. You can also make a pointed nose. Inward slanted guideline, top lip, bottom lip, little half circle, chin, jawline, ear, erase your guideline. The eye would go at the deepest part of the curve. Closed eye looks like this. Open eye looks like this. Eyelid, eyebrow, nostril, mouth curve, mouth triangle, neckline, ear details. Add whatever hair you want. Erase your headline. If you're feeling fancy, you can add some blush lines. Neck shadow, chin shadow, and there you go. More art tips with a brush pen. Easy cartoon side profile. Looks like a poorly drawn three. Straight line, straight line. Ear. Mouth. Eye. There you go. You wanted to learn how to draw eyes, you say. Well, I am here to show you. Back to the paper. There we go. First, you're gonna need a pencil. It can be mechanical, traditional, doesn't matter. As long as you have 
a pencil. Make a circle. With a darker pencil line, create the eye shape over the circle that you would like. And when I'm lining a drawing, I also use the edge of the circle as an eyelid. Make another circle or an oval, whatever shape you like. You guessed it, that's the iris. Make an oval that represents the pupil. I like to thicken the edges just to make it look like a wing of eyeliner. You can add little triangles and fill them in to represent lashes. Line it to your heart's content. She's a little smudged, but that's okay. Now get you some colors. I'm using greens. Get a light shade and a darker shade. Heck, you can even add a third shade if you want. Color the iris with the lightest shade you have. Take your darker shade and color half of that circle. If you have a third color, add it in the middle. Take a light gray or a blue and shade half of the eye. Use white gel pen for details and then you're done. Hey guys, I've been getting a lot of comments requesting that I do drawing tutorials. And by a lot, I mean like one, maybe two. But anyway, I'm going to teach y'all how I learned to do facial proportions. The technique I'm about to share is something my middle school art teacher actually taught me. I measure everything in terms of the eyes. Here's what I mean. If you look at the eyes together, usually another eye would fit right in between them and like half an eye on the outsides before your face ends. Now from the bridge, a nose is typically around the size of two eyes. A vertical one with a horizontal one placed just below it. The mouth is definitely bigger than an eye, but the corners of the mouth should be almost the same distance apart as your pupils. That way, when you draw a line straight up, it should reach the center of the eye. So in this drawing, I forgot the ears behind the hair, but the ears typically reach from the bottom of the nose to the brow. Sorry about not going into detail about how to draw each of the features or like the face shape. I thought I'd focus on placement for this video. But guys, hit me up in the comments about what you want me to do for my next one. How to draw hands. I think a lot of people struggle learning how to draw hands. I know I did a lot, and I tried to hide them as much as I could in any drawing that I did. Anyway, here's how I usually do it. So you're going to want to think of your hand as a big fan. You're going to want to start with a shape like this. Curved on the top, curved on the bottom. Picture it kind of like you're drawing a 3D coffee cup. So if it is a coffee cup, from this curve on the inside, you want to draw a third line in the same curve as your middle line. Bring this curve down like you're drawing a quarter of a circle, kind of. And this is where your thumb is going to go. This shape can take some practice, but just look at your own hand. Now you're going to draw a W. And you want to make sure that it follows this curve, too. Next is to round off the corners and draw a little bird up here. Here you don't want a thick line, just kind of a broken line. You just add some of the fleshy bits and the wrist. And there you go, that's a rough hand. Art tip. What do you draw for money? My advice, uh, NSFW stuff, furry commissions, which ain't always NSFW stuff, and like pet drawings. As long as you draw on a collar, you're gonna make that dollar. I'm gonna show y'all how I dissect perspective. Put your camera in place, take a photo. Identify your floor and corners. Then I sat in the chair, didn't move the camera. Overlaid it over the couch. You can see the couch through me. I never would have drawn someone sitting in a chair like that. Like, I just see the chest and the legs. And because you can't see the seat area of the couch, that means you can't see the seat area of me. But we always want to draw the pelvis, right? So our people look like they're floating in chairs. But this is the secret to making them actually look comfortable. Crazy. If you're an artist and you're watching this, you should start making a certificate of authenticity with every print that you sell. That way you have a log of the number of prints that you make, which print you sold, and uh, it actually adds value to your work. So I started giving these to all of my clients when they purchase prints with me, and I have to sign, number, and stamp each of them with my brand and logo. Hi, so some people have been asking me about my art and anatomy and like drawing and stuff and really I just like to say it's mostly just practice really I promise you it's just I've spent a lot of time on this stuff I come from a family of artists and I'm homeschooled so we really uh, prioritize art so I've spent a lot of time on it and even I'm not as good as I could be because I don't practice from life as much as I should be doing, um, which if I have any tips for you guys, it's draw from life, draw from reference, 
it really helps a whole